Hey, Math 20-2s. Today we're going to look at angles associated with parallel lines. So parallel lines and a transversal. On a diagram, parallel lines are often marked with arrows. So these two arrows right here indicate those two lines are parallel. A line that crosses parallel lines is called a transversal. So that third line there would be the transversal. If you'd like to label it, that's our transversal. When a transversal intersects parallel lines, there are several relationships between the angles that are formed. Angles associated with parallel lines A. Corresponding angles, or we call them the F angles or the F pattern. The dashed lines are all drawn using a ruler and a set square. Therefore, all the dashed lines are parallel. The marked angles are copies of the angle of the set square. So here's the angle of the set square. And all these angles are copies of that angle of the set square. Measure all the angles marked. Are they all equal? So get out your protractor. Let's quickly measure those. All right. So we'll take our protractor over here. Rotate it in place. And let's measure this. Angle up here. So expand that out. And what does that angle look to be about? We'll see that angle looks to be approximately 40 degrees, right? Right there. And let's try the next one. There we go. And again, on the inside of this angle here, and on the inside again, that looks to be about 40 degrees. Move down to this one. And again, on the inside of that angle, it looks to be about 40 degrees. And let's see if the set score is also about 40 degrees. All right. So put that thing on the angle there. And the inside of the set square seems to be roughly 40 degrees as well. All right. So they should all be the same. I've got them because I measured on the inside of that uh, line. I'm going to say they're all about 40 degrees. All right. Any pair of parallel lines makes an F shape with a transversal that crosses them. The angles marked A degrees are equal and are called corresponding angles. So you can see the F pattern right here. A degrees right there, A degrees right there. They are called corresponding angles. And they are equal in measure. So they're both labeled as A. On the diagrams below, mark three other pairs of F-shaped corresponding angles and label them B, C, and D. Note that the F-shape can be backwards or upside down. So we've got the F-shape up there for A. Well, I could make this F-shape. And I can call these angles B. All right. I could make this F-shape. And call these angles C. And the fourth one would be this F-shape. And these angles, I'm going to label D. All right. All of these are called corresponding angles. And the set of Bs are equal, the set of Cs are equal, and the set of Ds are equal. Just like the set of As are equal. All right, so we've got four sets of equal angles. Use corresponding angles and straight angles to calculate the angles marked by the following letters. So if I make an F pattern right here, I know that A and 120 are corresponding angles, and they should be equal. Therefore, A equals 120 degrees. And I also know that angles along a straight line add up to 180. So angle B is going to equal 180 minus angle A, which is 120. So angle B should equal 60 degrees. All right. You look over at the second example, I notice that 
We've got a pair of parallel lines as indicated by the arrows. So those two lines are parallel. I've got an F pattern formed right here. So I know that C and 124 are the same. So I can say that angle C equals 124 degrees. Same thing happens on this side, parallel lines with that transversal. Again, I've got an F pattern. Oop. Not with the letter, letter F, however. I have the F pattern with the letter E and 132. So angle E is 132 degrees. Now, like we did with the other example, angles along a straight line add up to 180. So I know that angle D has to be 180. Subtract angle C, which is 124. So angle D is going to have to be 56 degrees. The same thing happens with E and F, their angles along a straight line. So I know that F has to equal 180 minus angle E, which is 132. So 180 take away 132 is 48 degrees. So we have all our angle measures. We use the parallel line theorem with F pattern and we use straight angles. Part B, alternate interior angles or the Z pattern. All right. The Z in the diagram is made by two parallel lines. We can see they're parallel because the arrows are indicated. So those are our two parallel lines. And we've got this transversal here cutting across those parallel lines. If we extend two of the lines, we make an X and we have two equal angles that are opposite at the vertex. Right? So we extended those two lines. We make that X pattern here. So vertically opposite angles are equal. They're both 50. Now we also have an F shape as well. So if I look for the F shape, here's the F shape made by extending that one line. So I know that 50 degrees also equals A. Because they're corresponding angles, they form that F shape. We just talked about that in part A up above. So now we have an F shape. We know A is 50. So both the angles of the Z are equal. All right, so we go back to the original. A and 50 are both equal. These are both 50 degree angles. Let's see if that's true in all cases. Measure the angles in each of the following Z diagrams. See if they are equal. So use your protractor, measure them, then come back and see if you get the same thing I do. So what you should get is these Z angles, alternate interior angles, are both 60 for the first one. Here they are both 40 for the second one. And here they are both 105 degrees for the third one or roughly if you got the same thing. So any pair of parallel lines makes a Z shape with a transversal that crosses them. Again, the Z shape can be backwards or upside down. The angles marked A are equal and are called alternate interior angles or sometimes they're just called alternate angles. So you can see this Z pattern. So those are equal. There's another Z pattern right here. So these two angles would also be alternate interior, and they would also be equal. We could call those B. Those are B degrees. All right. So mark them. Another set of alternate interior angles. Call them B. We just did that. Example two. Use alternate angles and straight angles to calculate the angles marked by the letters. So right here, I see a Z pattern with B. So B and 69 have to be equal. So B equals 69 degrees. They are alternate to your angles. I also have a Z pattern right here. So A and 47 are equal. So A must equal 47 degrees. They are alternate to your angles. And we could say that these three angles are along a straight line. They have to add up to 180. Or you could say that these three angles are all inside a triangle. So the sum of those angles is 180. So either way you do it, C would have to equal 180 degrees, subtract A and B, or subtract 69 and 47. All right. So if we do that, you find out that angle C is 64 degrees. Let's look at part B. 
So we're told this is an isosceles triangle. Both those sides are equal. Therefore, if this angle is E, this angle must also be E. All right. So I'm going to use my isosceles triangle uh, knowledge. So I know the sum of the angles of a triangle have to up to 180. So I've got E plus E plus 42. So I minus 42 degrees from both sides of this, I get 138 equals E plus E, which is 2E. Divide both sides by 2, so half of 138 is 69, and that's what E is. So that's one way to get the measure of angle E using the isosceles triangles. All right. I also notice that I've got parallel lines right here with these arrows. So I see a Z pattern right there. So 42 and D must be equal because they're alternate interior angles on that Z pattern. That leaves me with just one angle left, angle F. I know that D, E, and F have to add up to 180. So angle F should equal 180. Subtract angle D and angle E. So angle D is 42 and angle E is 69. So we work through that and we find out that F equals 69 degrees. So that's one way to do it. All right. Look at the note here. When a pair of non-parallel lines is intersected by a transversal line, the corresponding angles and alternate angles are not equal. These two lines are not parallel, all right? They do not have the arrow indicating that they're parallel. So if these are not parallel lines, then the rules we just discovered are not true. So the corresponding angles which are not equal, A does not equal E, B does not equal F, C doesn't equal G, and D doesn't equal H, all right? So those are all sets of corresponding angles, but because they're not transversals, it's not true. And the alternate interior angles are also not equal, so C and E are not equal, A and, sorry, D and F are also not equal. So you can check with your protractor to prove that's the case. Last pattern we're going to look at, co-interior angles, co-interior angles, or the C pattern. The C in each diagram is made by two parallel lines and a transversal. Again, these would be the parallel lines. This would be our transversal. The angles marked O and X are called co-interior angles. Again, here's a pair of parallel lines. Here's another set of parallel lines. All right. O and X in every case are co-interior. Measure angles O and X in each diagram. Find out if they're equal. So take your protractors and try that. So if you measure them, the first one has O is 105, X is 75. The second one's the same thing. O is 75 this time, X is 105. The third one, O is 60 and X is 120. Are they equal? No, it's pretty obvious those angles are not equal. Can you discover a relationship between the values of O and X? Now if I look closely, I should see a relationship. I should notice that the two angles have a sum of 180 degrees. So we make a conjecture that co-interior angles are supplementary. So anytime we have two angles that add to 180, we call them supp supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. This conjecture will prove a little later in lesson three. So in example three here, let's calculate the measure of the three remaining angles in this parallelogram. So I've got parallel lines right here and right here. I know one angle is 48. I can figure out the other angle marked with the two lines there because I know that their sum should equal 180. So if I call this angle A, angle A has to equal 180 minus 48 because these make a C pattern and those angles are supplementary. They add to 180. 
So 180 minus 48 is 132 degrees. So angle A is 132. If I look over here, if I call this angle B, I've got another C pattern. Right? Parallel line, parallel line. Here's my transversal. So again, A and B would be supplementary. So B should equal 180. Subtract angle A, which is 132. Well, 180 minus 132 is 48 degrees. All right. And our third angle, if I call this angle C, I've got the C pattern again right there. And so B and C must be supplementary. It means they add up to 180 because they form the C pattern. So C is going to be equal to 180 minus B, which is 48 so C is also 132 degrees. Okay. So a quick summary of what we've learned in this lesson. When parallel lines are intersected by a transversal, when parallel lines are intersected by a transversal, which is any other line, then the corresponding angles are equal. That was our F pattern. Alternate interior angles are equal. That's our Z pattern. And co-interior angles are supplementary. That's our C pattern. If a transversal intersects two lines such that the corresponding angles are equal, the alternate angles are equal, and the co-interior angles are supplementary, then the two lines are parallel. So they're just working backwards with this one. If it doesn't say that the two lines are parallel, but corresponding angles are equal, alternate angles are equal, and co-interior angles are supplementary, then those two lines have to be parallel. So we're just saying the same thing up above, but from the other side of the argument. All right, you guys have your assignment. Let's complete questions that you were assigned. Where you go.